Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And welcome to this week's Thoughtful Thursday. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hacking Your Leadership and leave us a review on whatever podcast platform you listen to. On, on this Thoughtful Thursday, I want to ask you a question, Lorenzo, because you know we get a lot of community engagement. We get a lot of people that kind of reach out to us through DMs and messages and, and um, you know uh, phone chat, text messages, asking about episodes, giving us suggestions. And the episode that we posted, I guess, what is it, would be 10 days ago now, would be episode 276 on um, the common enemy and around, uh, you know, leadership teams that kind of have to work with each other. Uh, you you started alluding to an example of a time when you were the common enemy. And, uh, you know, we never really dove into that, but we had a significant number of people who reached out and said, whoa, 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 don't, don't just gloss over that. You, you, I want to know when Lorenzo was the common enemy, when, when, when Lorenzo was the kind of the odd, the odd person out on, on his team. Um, and, and the first time I saw one, I thought, oh no, we must've talked about that. And I went and re-listened to the episode and we didn't. And so all these people have a point. And so I guess what I want to what I want to ask you is uh, when were you the common enemy, Lorenzo? I think it's all the haters and the trolls that were that made me the common enemy that are now speaking up. No, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no, no. Hey, you, you volunteered yeah. the information, man. Now you got to yes. follow through. No, so it's happened uh, a few times. So I've I've had the unique experience of leading multiple teams in multiple locations over time, and um and, and for a while there. Uh, as a leader, I was kind of asked to be kind of like the fixer person, go into this maybe store location that um, is not performing well and maybe has cultural issues or whatever the heck's going on. Can you go in there, see what's going on and go do your thing, right? And and see what we can do to make it to make it fixed or make it work. And one of the things that I would pride myself on was doing the best work that I could do with the same people because I always felt that it was typically like a kind of a failure of leadership or, or, or not, um, not, not a healthy leadership environment that people were not being given the support that they needed to be successful. Right. And so a lot of Under times different that, conditions, the performance would have been better. It's not that they're bad people. And so the knee jerk shouldn't be to go in and replace everybody. And that's how you fix it. Correct. And, but and sometimes people need to get replaced and sometimes people need to move on for different reasons. And I think that's, when when I would be a common enemy. And, and you could see that because many organizations, many companies will do things like employee surveys, like, you know, things that you do in, in your consulting business and stuff like that. And there's always this kind of, I would always call it the roller coaster trend, which is like, hey, a new leader comes in. So, you know, I, Lorenzo comes in and there's some excitement and some positive energy. And there's a leader that's here and they're talking to us and getting to know us and spending time doing what we do. And also like in the retail industry has done the jobs of pretty much everybody. So it can go out there and comfortably do the job of customer service and sales and talking to people and understanding things like that. So like there's this initial upward tick and then you go, oh, wait a minute, there's responsibility here. Like you mean I got to come to work on time? You mean I have to follow the rules? You mean I can't just like, yeah. And so we start having those conversations. So what happens? It starts to come down a little bit from a from a com- you know from an employee standpoint because they don't like the fact that there are rules in these types of deals. And then it will come back up again. Like, hey, but we like this now because the people that were here that were kind of just hanging out, not doing any work, they're they're gone now, which is awesome because like I'm not being stressed out by having to do their job or being frustrated. This is great. But then, but wait a minute. Now there's more expectations. Now, now if I'm here, <laughs> I've passed the mustard of coming to work, doing what I, you know, like the basic expectations. Now I actually have to be, you know, showing advancement and development in my responsibilities that I have. And so I know there's been times, and again, maybe the audience is small of people or whatever, where uh, the feedback has been um, that, you know, that, that, uh, that there's been accountability or that things aren't like they used to be or that, you know, Lorenzo doesn't understand or that in, I take it all as a leader, you take the feedback, you take what's going on. But I know there have been many people in my career that probably have not appreciated my leadership style, uh, because it does come with, um, a dose of minimum basic expectations. And then it comes with an expectation that, uh, we're going to work together as a team and we're going to get better. And that doesn't, that doesn't work for everybody. And I know it sounds, it sounds silly to say that, but it's true. Look around, Whoever you're working with, think about your career, think about people that are there and say like that person just doesn't seem to want to do anything and they're always negative and they always have a problem or an issue. I guarantee you that person is not a Lorenzo fan. I like that. I like that example. I I would say the first thing I heard there was when you said that, you know, you come in as a new leader and there's, there's some excitement, right? That's the first thing you said. And I thought, well, if that's the case, 
that kind of supports the theory that maybe they didn't have a good experience with the leadership that was there already if it's outgoing. Because because if you come in and the experience is a downward tick, it's like, oh, we have new leadership. That implies that people really gravitated towards the one, the outgoing person or the outgo- the outgoing leader. And and if that's the case, well, then why? Why why did they gravitate towards the outgoing leader? Was it because they really empowered people and they helped people accomplish their goals? Or is it because they let those people get away with murder and didn't hold them accountable to anything? And and the answer could be both, for depending on who, who the person is. The other thing that I heard there when it comes to this kind of roller coaster you talk about is, you know, when when it comes to holding people accountable to a basic minimum expectation, it, you, obviously you have to start there. You have to you have to crawl before you can walk, before you can fly. And if you start holding people accountable to a high performance level of job execution when you haven't addressed the bare minimum standards first, it's going to be a recipe for disaster. So this is a uh, it's I don't want to say a slow moving ship because you know you don't you don't get years to do it, but but hopefully you get a few months or a few quarters to kind of steer this ship differently if you came into one that was on the verge of capsizing. Um, and so you start with the minimums and, and this kind of balance of like, of, you know, I don't like that I'm being held accountable, but, Oh, wait a minute. I like that other people are being held accountable. <laughs> no, no one wants to be held accountable, but they also, but what they, what they like less, what they hate more than being held accountable is working in an environment when they believe their peers are not being held accountable. Like, because in their own mind, they believe that they could rise to the occasion and they want the the low hanging fruit to go away. They want the people who they believe to be just drains on the system, who who never show up to work when they're supposed to be, who, who, who always have that chip on their shoulder. They want those people to go away. The good people at least do. Um, the, the, the people have the chip on their shoulder who don't even show up doing the basic minimums. They don't, I don't think even consider the other people to begin with. So it's not part of their thought process. And so it makes perfect sense. You go, you go through that, that roller coaster and hopefully you come out the other side. Um, the question I want to ask you then as a follow-up is, have you been in a situation where you had to defend that process from a time standpoint where you're brought in as this fixer? And then after one month or two months or three months, you're being asked, why haven't things changed yet? And where you have to actually articulate this isn't something this, you, you know, if it took you 50 pounds, if it took you 10 years to gain 50 pounds, you don't lose the 50 pounds in three months. You know, it takes a long time to do that. Um, but first, I want to give it up to word for one of our sponsors. All right, Lorenzo, have you ever had to defend this process because you know it well, you, you know about this roller coaster. Um, have you ever had to get to the point where you're sitting somebody down and saying, listen, you know, take a chill pill, have some patience. Um, this is going to take time, but, but I'll get you where you want to go. Um, yes, uh, many, many times, because a lot of times, uh, this is what happens in certain industries, is like the people that were in charge before are still in charge now. And so there's an element of um, how much was allowed, uh, how much may have been encouraged, how much was ignored. Uh, there's, a, there's, again, this element of self-accountability where you, it's a fine line. You know, um, y- yes, you have a, a certain time frame. Yes, there's work to be done. I think most leaders, when they see progress, um, are okay. At least most really good leaders understand that this will take time and progress. Um, and, and they will allow that to happen. But I think there are definitely times in my career where I've worked for leaders that um, it wasn't happening fast enough. And, and then the, the, the line that you have to walk as a leader in those spaces is one that says, hey, this is the work that I'm doing. I feel really confident about what's going on here. Here's some things I had to address. While at the same time not saying, well, if, if you were aware of this, then this shouldn't have been to this <laughs> point Anyway, you know what I'm saying? Like, you like got, you got to infer it without saying it, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yes, I know it's been it, it. It has been difficult. You know, I've been dealing with a couple of issues that have been ongoing for the last three years. <laughs> I know I've only been here for three days, but right. the last three years. Uh, but we're coming to resolution on those things, so we're going to go yeah. ahead and move those. So, like, it, it is a little bit of an art and science. Um, of how to do that. Um, but I also think that that's a little bit of a red flag. And I know we've talked about this before from a leadership standpoint of if you have a leader who uh, doesn't understand uh, that, that change takes some time and that doing it the right way um, can take some time as well, that is a little bit of a reflection uh, potentially of how they see leadership. And that could be a little bit of a red flag because that might be some of the reason that the previous leader may have had some opportunities in those spaces. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I, there, I think back to when I first started my consulting career and a client that I had that it, it, it was the most stressed that I had ever been. And it was because, you know, I was kind of like 
feeling like I was waking up unemployed every day, having this like kind of idea of like all business is good business. And I took on a client who had those red flags, the, the red flags of they wanted it to change on a dime. They, their own behavior and leadership style was at least part of the problem. And they were unwilling to change those things. But as the brand new, like starting my own company and wanting to take it on, I thought, great, income is income. Let's just do this. And I, I had to cut ties with that company. And, and, and I know to this day that they look at, at the situation as that I failed, that I couldn't get done what I claimed to be able to get done. When in actuality, it was that they were unwilling to to do the work also, and it kind of it was it just made me really aware of the fact that those red flags are really important to consider. Those red flags can can make or make or break the difference between the work you're getting done, getting done, and the people who have those red flags, the people who are the ones to pull you aside and say, "Get it done faster, get it done faster," are the same people who, when it doesn't work because they set it up to not work won't have the self-awareness to think it didn't work because I tried to make Lorenzo do it in three days. They're going to think Lorenzo was supposed to be this great fixer who couldn't come in and do what I expected that what I expected them to do. And so, yeah, they're, being aware of it is absolutely crucial. Setting expectations up front is crucial and having that communication up front when you're asked to do something to say, these are the things that are going to be needed. And, and if this isn't okay, then like very, very explicitly, these are the expectations. And if this isn't okay, I'm probably the wrong person for this job. And, and, and having the humility to say that, um, in hindsight, I wish I had done that with that client instead of thinking all, all income is good income. Um, but I, I definitely do it today. And I definitely have turned down business today because of those red flags. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. This is Hacking Your Leadership, a Speaker Prime podcast. I'm Lorenzo. And I'm Chris. And have a great day.